Hey guys, so we're going to take a break from uh, cat faces for a little while. Um, this installment's going to go over pause. Uh, the biggest complaint I hear from artists getting reference pictures from clients is they cut off the feet, now I don't know what to do. So this is going to cover the anatomy of feet. We've uh, already gone over a little bit on anatomy with feet in the uh, anatomy segments on the uh, on this series. But uh, this is going to give you um, kind of an idea on how to render them in different positions from kind of an upward reaching to uh, just kind of dangling uh, to actually coming out at um, somebody. And of course we're going to do the... Uh, so we're going to figure out how to do that. That standard standing pose, both on the side, whoops, do on the side, and then uh, with, with, as if the, the cat was facing you. <clears throat> so on this page, I have nine different feet. Um, I did start this tutorial once, and unfortunately, due to uh, noise problems in the apartment below me, and uh, time constraints, I had to erase as much as I could, and we're going to take two on this one. So uh, the uh, paw over here is the one we're going to start with. I'm going to try and chop this up as best I can into segments. So if there's a specific spot uh, you'd like to go over or touch on, or if you have questions with a particular paw, uh, many of these are breed specific. Um, several of these are Bengals. Uh, a couple of them are uh, Lynx Point, and a few are uh, Orientals. So you're going to notice a, a distinct difference between the the feet between the um, the Orientals and the other breeds, uh, mostly because the Orientals have very uh, knuckled the knuckles are very defined, and uh, those of course are going to be uh, seven and eight. So, if there's a particular paw position you're looking for, uh, feel free to scan through. We're going to start with uh, one right now, which is an upreaching position. And the other technical problem I had is that I did not have my reference picture, so uh, my notations were not as accurate as I would like them to be. Alright, so this is an upward reach. Uh, specifically, this cat is uh, three quarters toward the viewer, reaching up uh, to grab something. And this thing could be as much as a toy. It could be a bird. It could be a butterfly. It doesn't really matter. Um, the the view is from the top of the paw, uh, so the cat's at a three quarter twist. Okay, uh, the cat is a Bengal, so the color coloring is going to affect the. Uh, shading a little bit, but not too dramatic. Alright, so we have defined here our four toes. And like I said, I, I did start this tutorial once and then had to stop. And we're going in with the, uh, the HB hard. And... defining the toes, and of course if you have gone back through and you've reviewed the anatomy, uh, we're not going over polydactyl cats, we're only going over uh, standard anatomy cats. Um, I don't have too many requests for polydactyl cats in uh, 10 years. I've had one uh, client that's actually asked me to, um, that, that has had a polydactyl cat, so uh, and if you review your notes, uh, polydactyl cats are cats with multiple toes. Alright. And I apologize once again for the children outside who apparently think it's World Cup Day. Alright. So again, just defining the shape here. It's very tubular. And I'm going to shy away from actually putting any markings on these paws because it can all be really rather specific per breed. And seeing as how 
some of these tutorials can go on for a few hours. A little water. Alright, coming back in with the medium, we're gonna go with the slightly softer charcoal. And we're not looking at any real hard lines. The um, the paws themselves have some really soft, short fur, so we don't need a whole lot of contrast defining the fur itself, rather than we need contrast to define the shapes of the feet. You think the kids in the background are loud now? It was worse the first time I recorded this. At least today they are outside. So, back and forth with the two hardest charcoals without getting into the carbon pencils themselves. And again, the fur here is very soft. It's very, a uh, lot of um, fleshy, uh, soft parts of the paws. Um, fur here is really rather thick. Um, one could almost describe it as downy, kind of. And the parts that we're shading here are going to help to define the knuckles. Okay? Because so your knuckles are going to be the harder, less fleshy parts of the toes. Just like on your hand where it's fleshier in between the fingers than it is on the knuckle, because there's muscles here. That's the same way it is on a cat's paw. So here you're going to have a small amount of muscle and tendon, and so the fur is going to have more depth to it. And then the less depth parts are going to be up on the knuckle. So it'll actually, by not shading or putting a whole lot of shadow and emphasis on the knuckles, it'll help to raise the knuckles up. Okay, so we have knuckles all the way across here and then knuckles here. So, well, I really want to shade here because this is going to push this toe back from this toe. I have a kind of contrast here and the contrast is, and the conflict is, is that this toe becomes white. Um, so the, the, the markings on this cat go from a golden color back here to white on the toes, but at the same time I need to uh, put some distance here. So I do want to put some amount of shading, and I am going to put it on the back end at the toe behind. Pencil. As sad as that is, that HB, that in particular HB pencil has been giving me some trouble. <clears throat> and again, even with these, even with the parts where you don't really want to show a lot of detail in the individual hairs of the uh, fur. Um, because you want to show that softness and you want to emphasize the shape of uh, the paw versus the texture of the paw. Um, you want to keep your pencils nice and sharp. And I do apologize despite the fact that I've taken that child out like four times today. We just decided that it's his time to come out. Alright. 
So I'm going with the H with the uh, carbon pencil, which is giving me less trouble than my HB today. And we're gonna go in and just define this toe. And depending on how detailed and specific you want to get will depend on how much time you want to spend on uh, each in particular um, piece of the anatomy. I mean, uh, if you're if you're doing a tutorial like I am, it, it, it and it's just a really quick study, you may spend a couple of minutes on it. If you're doing something. That's just a, uh, that's, you know, for a finished piece, you may actually be at it for several hours. Alright, since this paw is, is white on the toes and has depth of shading here, we're going to go again to create the shape, negative positive background. So we're going to go back here. I'm going to go in with the soft one. to help create the uh, negative positive space here. Because I'm honestly not going to um, shade those toes any darker and they're so light right now that it's very easy to lose them in what is currently a white background. So we're going to make the background darker. See the general shape that we've got here standing out. I don't necessarily need this background tracking. Another thing is, uh, so somebody asked me how I, I start uh, start with some of my drawings um, and where I started getting a discipline on animals. As dumb as it is, um, I started with cartooning. Um, when you notice how like uh, animators like Disney, um, Pixar hasn't done too many animal series, um, but uh, a lot of Disney, uh, when I was a kid, Garfield was real popular. Uh, Snoopy, Warner Brothers, how they draw, animate their characters' toes. It's really similar to how uh, toes actually are. And so, going forward from that was a lot easier than, uh, than uh, backtracking and learning realism and then learning cartooning. Alright, so back up here, so we've got the one toe would be the equivalent of your, your forefinger, uh, your forefinger, middle finger, ring finger, pinky finger. Do claw acts as a, a thumb. So on this cat it is um, I apologize, it is the uh, uh, right paw, not the left paw. Um, I need to have to keep looking at my reference picture to remind me of that. Alright. So you have 
the pad that comes out from under here. This right here does act kind of as a marking and the cat's paws in motion. Pick up a little pigment there. So again, just like uh, if we were doing faces, um, picking up a little pigment uh, with blending stumps never hurts. Um, Just the shape right here. In this case, there's a shadow that goes behind this toe. And then the hollow between the toes comes back. So this doesn't quite look so flat. We're going to carry it and soften the edge right here. Keep that as the highlight. And I did kind of smudge that a little bit. I know I didn't mean to. This one, the oops, um, claws are not extended. I'm not sure if this cat was declawed or not, but in this in particular reach, the cat's claws are not extended. So again, this is a, a more golden coat. Definition on his toes. Big side from the peanut gallery that would really like to go to the park right now. Again, I'm not going to go too much into too much detail, but again, you have the upreaching kind of grasp, just like that. That's one. Okay. Two is a paw wreath kind of hanging down. And this is on a, an or, uh, Egyptian mouse, so it's a lankier cat, but uh, not so much that we uh, are going to have an extreme amount of knuckle definition. So down like so. And then the de definition for the dew claw. And basically for these two toes, it's almost going to be like a giant teardrop. Except that in the middle of that teardrop, we're going to put a little split so that we can divide these two toes up. Okay. 
the overall shape here is going to be very oval-like with all the toes and pads kind of coming together for that general shape. <clears throat> now to make this look more like a paw and less like Excuse me. More like a paw and less like uh, something that's just flat. You first have to get rid of that definition and then figure out where our shadows are. So in this one we have a shadow that comes right across from here, kind of at an angle. Okay. Then there's another set of shadows that come down here. I go right across the knuckle. Okay. This knuckle is kind of highlighted. This knuckle is highlighted, but only kind of sort of right here. And then this toe is relaxed. Now we have the kind of definition here. This is an odd looking kind of toe. It's kind of like a triangle thing, almost where its paws almost this toe is almost kind of turned uh, out. Um, the dew claw itself, this digit is is really oddly defined, almost like you could really just section off the ruddy silly thing. All right, so then we've got. Some muscular definition here, down through this digit. So you start refining it from there. Alright, then you break it down further into subsections, and the easiest way I can say that is to break it down into almost planes. Where you have uh, one plane that's flat, and one plane that maybe tips up, and one plane that's curved. And they effectively build up like a book on how you're going to finish executing this. It always is very helpful, however, uh, no matter how good your notes are, to always keep your reference picture handy because, well, even though you may have made the notes, that doesn't mean that you're not going to change your opinion on how you're going to get it done. Alright, so with this one, because I have a real heavy shadow here, I'm not going to worry too much like I did with this one with back shadowing. And again, try and keep your strokes in the same direction as the fur. That will help you not hurt you. Lighting on this cat is fairly harsh, and um, the grain of the fur is showing up remarkably well. The only problem with that is it's making this cat look really rough. And for anybody who owns a cat, you know that. Uh, Cat legs and paws are not coarse, they're very soft. So again, we're going to have to go back in, and despite what the picture tells us, we're going to have to kind of soften this and shade by um, shape rather than for texture. I'm going to try and make this as fast as I can, so I don't think this is going to be really a very finished piece. It's not going to be very refined. So Back here we have some inclinations of the dew pad, which on this cat is black. So give that a little bit of shadow. We've got a little bit of inclination at the claw here does come out. Right. 
the rest of this just becomes shading. So if you're worried about um, not making things look flat, the best I can tell you is honestly practice drawing cylinders. Practice drawing basic shapes, uh, cylinders, and circles, and eggs, and that will help you execute <coughs> other things that seem to be way more complicated, like um, paws or legs. Um, and I'm not meaning to be sound facetious when I say that. It's a, a genuine tip. Uh, one viewer uh, wanted to know if I use a grid system. And in some, in some pieces I will. Um, when I'm building up from the raw, and I'm building up a conceptual piece, um, a lot of it starts in my head as an idea of what I'd like the subjects to be doing. And um, For example, I'll do um, a, a piece called uh, Plotting, um, which is five ferrets laying in a, effectively a cat bed, and a few of them are napping, and in the background there's like a stained glass piece. In the stained glass piece, the, some of the ferrets are in the foreground, or in the background stained glass piece getting into some trouble. Specifically, they're getting into a, platter, a planter. And, um, the concept of the piece was to find a way of storytelling what ferrets would dream about. And so I had to find a medium by which um, I could tell the story, and the easiest way is to put like artwork of some sort behind them, and have them dreaming, as many pet owners will comment about how they feel like their animal's dream. Alright. And then from there it was going through my reference shots to figure out what positions I wanted the ferrets laying in that I had decent reference shots for because whatever um, shots I had, either I had to work with them or I had to just how I was planning my piece or shoot different reference pictures because I had to have two different styles of executing it. One was more of a, an interpretative um, artistic expression as it was in stained glass and the other one was had to be anatomically correct so that you could tell the difference. And then it was, I decided on a size, and decided on a medium, and it was a matter of blocking it in, and literally I will start with deciding on a size, and then blocking in the pieces for however I want the layout to go. Um, in a piece like plotting, um, and there will actually be, I have several notebooks uh, at my desk, and so there will be almost like a, a, it's like a director's notebook or a production notebook that will have uh, the, uh, a list of, it will have the name of the piece, or a number for the piece, or however I want to use to describe the piece until it actually has a title. And then, there will be production notes for uh, reference shots, for color, or lighting, or material. There were a lot of material shots used for plotting because of the stained glass. Uh, there was only four reference shots used for anatomy. And that was so that I could get them to look sleeping and not dead. Because 
even a ferret owner will tell you that sometimes they've mistakenly thought that their ferrets were dead when they were sleeping because they're so sound sleepers. So the real challenge on that was to make sure that they looked like they were sleeping. And then a couple of ones to get the uh, anatomies to look like they were correctly proportioned in relation to the other ones. They weren't like overly big. <clears throat> Let's see. Just going through and we're putting in the shadow for the knuckle again. And for this one really, I'm not doing anything I didn't do with this one over here. Um, we're shadowing in the soft tissue in between the knuckles and we're putting shadows on the outside so that we give it that uh, rounded curved uh, feeling. Things are not going so well outside because it seems like the kids are starting to fight. Alright. Alright, so I'm not going to go in with my carbon that's not been giving me any problems. I'll go in with the hard that has been giving me problems. So we're going to emphasize the space between the toes first, so we get some kind of separation here. And define each toe. I'm not sure if it's correct or not, but it looks like I've got a little bit of pad here. Let's so get that coming up. A little bit of pad on this one. a little bit of pad on this one. So again, this is like a uh, all white paw and there is a little bit of of marking here where it's a little bit silver, but again, this is smaller bones with fleshier parts. There's more muscle mass here. So because there's more muscle mass, the, the, the fur is going to be a little bit thicker and a little denser, and therefore it's going to be a little bit darker. <coughs> Try and keep a Shading <clears throat> in line with the directionality of the fur. It's time we change this a little bit. So you notice that by shading here and shading here, we've kind of made that paw come out and then down a little bit.
more black space you put in between toes, the more perceived shadow and therefore the more perceived distance. Okay, now on this one, we have a small difference from the rest of the toes, and that is that this digit is up and there is a shadow. Or like I said, it looks like this toe is just turned a little bit. Like maybe we've got some This effectively is going to be the end digit in this toe, and maybe the, this cat's just got a, either a white marking on this toe, or maybe that this is slightly either thinner fur, or bonier flesh. It's going to be hard to tell. This, quite obviously, because of the shadowing that's on this right here, is a very deep spot between toes. Let me just rub this out. right here. There are some small little flaws here. And it's not like it's a straight line. Um, so idiosyncrasies between the toes. So each toe is treated as its own little individual thing. So like, this toe is definitely separate from this toe. And this line of shadow, it's right underneath this knuckle, is a little bit more pronounced.
now I know to put some weight behind the shadow we need to put a little bit. More pigment down. This one, there is quite a bit of weight here. I apologize, uh, my camera format was set on large, and so it cut that last part off. Uh, it's not like uh, anybody was really missing anything, because for the most part uh, I was done. I was just refining the edge here, and then around the toes. However, I had started the next one, and uh, didn't realize it was no longer recording. <laughs> So we're going to go back over how this is a uh, same thing, paw dangling down. Uh, this one, of course, is now a three-quarter view. And uh, going with the general directionality, uh, this being the wrist joint, and of course your dew claw is uh, in with that wrist joint. And then straight line for uh, the beginning of this foot. And then how the... Uh, toes here are all lining up. You can kind of still sort of see the guidelines I was using to sketch that out. Um, this is a uh, Lynx Point Siamese, uh, meaning that it, it has uh, tabby markings, um, but is pointed darker at uh, the extremities, being paws, face, and tail, and ears. So um, this one actually has a little bit of uh, darker marking and um, if it was a horse, I would call it pie ball marking uh, around its toes. So this one is going to seem to be a uh, give its own challenges along with anatomy. Um, I'm going to go on with the carbon pencil here. Um, so what we have here is we have uh, the general dip that comes with the gradient here. Okay, that we need to define. Um, as I had said earlier, it was hard to de decide whether or not this cat was clawed or declawed um, because while it has markings here, the dew claw itself is not very, um, this dew digit on this paw is not defined and this is the inside part of the paw so this effectively would be the thumb. And yet, on this one, it's it's really not very well defined. If it wasn't for the fact that I know my anatomy, I would almost think it didn't have one. Okay, so... Um, in this case, in order to help convey this kind of three-quarter turn, uh, we're not only going to have to define the shadow that comes from the far part of the wrist here to this toe, but also across the paw to this toe. And then give the curve here to each one of these toes so that um, the shape of each paw along with the overall shape, or the shape of each toe uh, is retained as well as the uh, overall shape of the paw. Um, so you want to go and keep your dark shadow um, you are going to have dark spots in between the bases of the toes 
uh, versus the end of the toes themselves. Um, because the knuckles here are larger and so it's going to be easier to define those spaces. But again, um, try to avoid the, the hard lines um, and the hard shadowing that you would normally have. Just like if you're uh, shading out what is the um, the nose section of the face where the actual hard cartilage is, it is you can easily define the uh, the directionality of the fur. Uh, but what you don't want to do is overemphasize the texture of the fur because then it's going to look coarse, and that that very well may be the, the aspect that you're going for. Um, is is emphasizing it. Um, but for just standard rendering you don't necessarily need to. This is such an odd marking here. It comes down right across this digit. I'm going to try and go a little bit faster so that I know that this records so. If, if you're looking for, uh, like I said, tips on uh, just general shapes or how to start, uh, general cat anatomy, um, you don't know where to kind of start everything, kind of seems a little overwhelming. Um, don't feel bad about watching a couple of Disney movie, movies and getting, because that's about as broken down as it can possibly be, where you have one subtle line and then there is a solid shape line for to give you some concept of dimension. This one, because the light is coming down from the top, what's hidden in the shadows is the bottom of the paws. And then we'll just go in a little bit with some shadow back here. Again, so your shadow kind of not only encompasses each toe, but you're encompassing the whole of the paw. And then, um, you know, feel free to go through and highlight as you wish. Okay, so that's going to be the anatomy of a paw hanging down. Okay, this is a nice and easy one. 
And yes, now I can confirm, yes, it was a Lynx Point Siamese. All right, so four and five are paw to the side, so four paw to the side and four paw three quarter at you. And again, going after this, um, and not so much of a uh, fine detail, but more as um, a general anatomy thing. Okay, so when I said that, uh, watch the Lion King, yeah, because this is literally how we're going to do it. So we got paws and a general shape. Okay. So when you when you sit down and you're watching how the animators do it, it's the same kind of thing. So you're coming down with this general shape, and then we're going to break it into halves. Okay. And then we're going to break it up again. So we're going to create that one and that toe. Okay. This toe gets a little bit smaller because it's in the background. This toe is going to come back. This toe is going to come back. This is easily the most classic and iconicized kind of paw um, position that people know. Okay, so I don't really have to go into too much detail on how to do this. Um, Still can't tell whether or not this cat's been declawed. I think it has. Yeah, I think this cat's been declawed. So we have um, a heavy shadow here. And in this case, I'm not, I'm going to break my own rules because I'm just trying to get <coughs> through this as fast as possible before this thing cuts out again and I lose three quarters of a tutorial. Alright, so we've got a heavy a heavy shadow here. This line I do not need to keep hard. The rest of those lines I do need to keep hard. And in actuality what we're going to use to define here to here is there's going to be a shadow here. This is actually going to be a highlight, so this line is going to define the back of the leg, not the top of the toe. So shade back from the foot, or into the foot and the leg, not the top of the toe. Because you're going to put a shadow where a highlight is, and it's going to make your eye very confused. That puts the highlight on the knuckle, not on... Let's go on a little bit. That's going to put the, sh the highlight on the knuckle, not on the back of the leg. Alright, so then we need to put other things here. So we got the division between the toes. And again, we can put some shadow back here. So we're pushing the leg behind the feet. Okay. Here we need to start defining individual parts of the toe. So we've got this starts to define this knuckle here. Okay. So you've got this soft portion of uh, flesh. So now we need to define this part of the toe. I said, it's hard to tell on this cat if this cat's declawed or not. But we need to give it some kind of shape. So we have a fleshy part here. Um, shadow back behind the paw. Give it some physical weight, some physical mass. Okay. And then you can drag that all down. Okay. Okay. Now, the 
this now has to become a flowing part. Okay, and this becomes um, the outside of your hand here. Okay, so this is all one piece. This is not two pieces. If you watch a Disney movie, this becomes two pieces. This becomes this part and then this part. So we need to step away from the Disney movie and take the anatomy and make it real. So we have the shadow that is the back of the paw here. This is actually the top of the paw, but we need to put some distance between the top of the paw and the toes. Toes are in the foreground, top of the paw is in the background, the leg is way behind all of that. So all we need to do now is to just soften the blow. Okay, so if we soften, we can carry this shadow all the way up the leg. Because remember, you've got major tendons here that help control these feet. Okay, so we can go and we can do a little weight bearing and a little shadow here. and carry that all up through this leg. Okay. And then back down over here. Okay. And you can, you know, depending on what's in your background, you can uh, background enhance this like we did with the first paw. Or you can foreground enhance it where you're doing uh, the three-quarter turn like uh, in here, okay, where the shadow's on the paw. In this case, the light would be behind the paw, or the light would be on the paw. I almost don't want to know what they're doing out there. And of course, because this is background, I really don't care which way I shade. I just need that paw to stick out. Okay, just like that. Okay, so now we've got some definition. Alright, we also need to give this paw some weight, so in between the toes is really important. This is going to help define the mass of the feet. The heavier the shadow, the more weight you give it. I mean, even if with this cat, which it's it's got a, a, a shadow right down on top of it, just that little bit of shadow underneath the toes helps to get some bearing weight down on these toes. But now we need to, they still look flat. This is this is Simba's paw right here. This is getting a little ridiculous. So now we need to give this cat some joints. So we have again. See if I can get a little bit over here. There we go. So a little bit here. And then we're going to carry a little bit between the two toes. Okay. And then a little bit down this way. And definitely picking some curvature up from the bottom. <clears throat> the paws are not flat. Disney movies, it's good for shapes. In reality, they're soft, they're fleshy. <clears throat> and there's a lot of contour. So a lot of contour leads to a lot of shading. They're not uniform, so I mean, there you, you need those little those little parts where something just doesn't quite line up right, or maybe it's it's the little non-perfectness that make make this paw from cartoony to something substantial. So this toe 
gets a little defined here, and then this right here. Okay, and then it comes back here. And then we have the rest of this kind of hanging out in shadows. Disney paws are great for basics, they are not good for more advanced stuff. So, okay. And then this one is way the hell up here. assume that at some point, if this cat doesn't have claws, that this cat was declawed, maybe. Because I've got a slit here with kind of a pouch where this cat's claw either is retracted down into or it's toe was. Because remember, the, um, the, the toe itself or the claws is, ampu is amputated. So if you go back on the first two videos covering anatomy, it's going to tell you how when, you know, the toe is bent, how this, that final digit actually curves back in order to retract the claw. So when the toes are, when a cat puts its paw down, um, let's back out here, when a cat puts its paw down, that this toe actually goes up in order to retract the claw. All right, so da -da -da. and then da 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 da. Okay, and then we'll give a little bit of a highlight here to make this paw, this toe, stand out from absolute nothing. So this is your iconic uh, forward-facing toe. Five is your side-facing toe. So depending on where the, the leg is on this one, it's the cat's really much square down on its foot. Um, so you can go, let's not do that, square down, and then straight over. Okay, and you can square that off and then come down. Okay. And then start to to um you know take that out from there. So I mean you wind up with A lot of similarities to <clears throat> paw here. Okay, so on this one, this is the inside paws. So we have the dew claw here and the weight bearing down. Okay, to the back of the paw. Arching the toe. Recess where the claw would be. And then this toe. Okay. Way up here, you would have the uh, top of the knee joint ankle 
and we have weight bearing down into here and then this goes down and actually comes up okay comes around like so okay this last toe is very 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 hidden okay it's almost non-existent So again, shading here is basically the same as shading here. Um, accent points under any weight bearing areas. There is some indication that this cat had claws or has claws, hard to tell. Um, there is a fur change here at the top of this toe because this fur comes straight down the toe but your perspective of it changes so you have a dark spot here shadowing in between digits so you have the mass amount for the pad mass amount for this toe and then shadowing in between kids went inside with the street lights went on. Alright. If you guys want me to, I can go into more detail with this in particular foot. If you guys really want me to. But considering that these are your two most common foot sets as far as front paws being the full on and the size view, we're going to move on to uh, less common and uh, what can be more dynamic shots. Okay? Still working on the same page. This was an, um, another bangle. Again, shot at uh, a cat show. This is a paw um, dead on, paw coming dead on at you in the air. So no weight bearing on it really. Actually, I take that, that back. That's a lie. This cat was had its paw going through a bar, so technically it has weight bearing on it. However, when interpreted in motion and drawn in motion, you don't necessarily need it to have it bearing weight on something. Alright, so we have the foreshortening of the leg. Okay. We have the general shape of the paw, which is kind of oval. Okay, so we're going to start with first surface, which is the front paws. So we're going to start with an oval shape, then a second pattern going back into the pads. Okay, so first oval shape, second oval shape. Then again, we're going to divide it right down the middle to get the first toe. Pick a side, divide that one. Okay. And then, in this case, this cat had the other digit behind the um it had actually had a pop it had the bar here. <clears throat> so do the roundness, roundness for the pads. And then this cat I happen to know had claws. So we have the split for the paws, and then we have the pads. Okay, split for the claws, and then you have the pads. This particular toe, because it was stuck, we have this wonderful delight of 
an extended claw coming right at you. Just get in on my reference picture here. Okay. So then you have the hook of the claw, flat section where it hits the the flesh where the, the nail bed hits the toe. Actually take that back a little bit. And then it comes back down to a point. Alright. And then the f this area here around that is actually doesn't have too much fur. Okay. This might actually be a little bit straight than what I've got at this. Alright, so then that takes up the vast majority of that. And this is actually not that much. It comes back to the back of the heel of the paw, so you've got the pad back here. Like so. A lot of this is going to be in shadow, and you're not really going to be able to see the definition of it. This actually comes down like that, kind of like a snake. Okay, and then the wrist comes up like that. All right. Much less finished drawings versus just rough starting. Okay, so then you wind up with your first major break being between these two toes. And again, this is a... We're doing quick studies here. And on this bangle, he has black paws, so it doesn't really help me. This toe comes out like this. Not quite the definition between here and here. And up for this toe. That pad. That pad definition. And then back here like this. Now this claw becomes a little technically difficult because it's all the way extended and in this case it's in motion. <coughs> We're actually going to shade it around it. We're not going to shade it itself. So we're going to put the paw here behind it. Everything's going to go behind that claw. That claw has got to be the most prominent thing. And more specifically, the front edge, which is actually a curved surface, is going to be the most prominent part of that claw. In order to pull this claw off the paw, we need to get more distance between it, which means 
more shadow. thing is is that back here whoops wow I just managed to flip my pencil over my shoulder this is just so full of bloopers today okay so this paw you can see the pad okay this paw toe you can see the pad this paw or this toe you can also see the pad so of course on this toe you're gonna have to be able to see the pad that just makes sense where the pads gonna be is actually behind here and my only problem with putting that here is that a this toe is dipping in so initially I drew this in the wrong spot it's quite out that far So the toe comes, or the pad comes back here, and then goes in. And then under here, if you think of the shape of this pad here, it actually is kind of like a heart shape. So it comes back like this. It's like a really broad looking heart. Okay. And then you have your four toes. Okay. So this is going to come right back up into <clears throat> being hidden by all these, the paws, or the toes. I'm just having a vocabulary problem. So shadowing all of this is going to be just fine. And then depending on what um, breed of cat you're doing, I mean obviously if you're doing uh, a white Persian and then this paw is pink, it's going to be darker. Um, or if you have a, a, a white pawed cat and then the paws are pink, the pad's going to be, um, you know, darker. How, how did I mean to say that? Depending on what, sh depending on what breed the cat is, is going to depend on how much impact the pad is going to have on defining the paw. On this Bengal, the paws are cream colored and white colored and gold colored. The pads are black. On um, what? maybe a white Persian they'd be pink so what they would still be highly defined and there would be actually more defined than they would here because they would be of a lighter color and be they would have more light and therefore more contrast versus here where they are very hidden this is actually in this shot this here is all one big black shadow. And that big black shadow starts at these pads and then goes back.
and it goes back here. And so on. This toe is actually much darker than I have it shadowed here. And helps bring that together there. This is also much darker like that. So yeah, I guess it's gonna, I'm gonna say it's gonna depend on what breed you're drawing in order to depend on, that will tell you, determine how much definition and how much impact the feed anatomy is gonna have. I mean, yeah, they're all the same species, but that's not to say that you're going to drop a uh, Manx like you're going to draw a Bengal, that you're going to draw a Bengal like you would a Siamese, or that you're going to draw a Persian like an Oriental. So these little subtle things, as you can see, are already hitting impactful things like paw anatomy. Because on this cat, I know for a fact that this pad is back underneath here, but in this shot, and it is, it is a quality shot, but you cannot tell because of the shadowing and the color of the pads and the paw and the fur underneath the paw and the lighting, you can't tell what is what back beyond. Okay, six. So we're on to seven. Seven. Seven is uh, an oriental, so we're gonna have way more definition in in knuckle and less on on actual making excuses with fur, because orientals have uh, very 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 fine fur. So this is gonna be the it, it's actually gonna look a little possibly creepy. Uh, to some people. Um, but compared to other cats, Orientals have a, a pretty bony kind of... Okay, I apologize for the huge amount of uh, interruptions and, com uh, and steadiness. Uh, seems my memory card keeps cutting out. Alright, so now we're going to start with um, Orientals, okay, and unlike uh, some of these other cat paws where we've got Bengals and short hairs and uh, Lynx Point Siamese, uh, an Oriental, uh, the joints on an Oriental are going to be uh, much more pronounced because the hair on an Oriental is a lot small, uh, thinner and it's a lot finer, um, almost to the point where you can say they're like a... Uh, a sphinx where they don't, it's almost like as if they don't have fur on their paws. So the joints are going to be much more pronounced. And I do apologize again, uh, I did start this one here and uh, no fears, I have another one up over here uh, that I was going to work on. Um, 
So this paw would be coming down at a three quarter uh, toward the viewer. Okay, and as you can see, I have already uh, filled in effectively the shapes of the joints. Um, this cat, of course, would be a uh, clawed, uh, as it was a purebred champion, um, and because the fur is so fine, we're focusing on a lot on the shapes and not really on the texture. There really isn't a whole lot of texture on these feet because the fur is so fine. So we're putting one toe behind another toe behind another toe. And this one of course is going to be the darkest. So that we can put some distance here. Alright. And then we're going to put uh, again the uh, soft uh, fleshy parts in between the knuckles where it's not quite so bony is where we're going to have a little bit of shadow. There's a little bit of dip in the toe. Just like there is on a... The best thing I can describe would be something like a, a person that has maybe a really uh, bad arthritis. In this case there's a split between these two toes. Okay. And then there's a, quite a break here. So your foreground digit or your foreground uh, anatomical part would get the highlight and then your background anatomical part uh, would get the shadow. And that's how you're going to put one in front of the other or one behind the other. Okay. So with this one we have a digit that comes down around here. Okay, and then comes down here. And then the shadow on this one seems to come up like this. <coughs> so again dealing with more fleshy parts rather than bony parts. And uh, I'm not a really big fan of putting lines in for uh, shadows. I am here so you get the general concept of uh, that there is some shape to the shadows that helps define like the knuckles. Um, but compared to uh, some of the other studies that we, you know, I've done where we're really getting into uh, strokes and uh, different lines that help define texture. Um, this is not necessarily one of them comparatively. This is, are going to look a little cartoony. But this is to help you with different perspectives in anatomy studies rather than <clears throat> getting really high into detail. Okay, so we're accenting the knuckles here. We get out of the knuckles and then we're gonna put the dips here to put these digits behind and off into the background. So as you can see, as we're kind of moving forward from um, a standard uh, standing paw 
Okay, so this is kind of like your default here position where a cat is standing on it, to where maybe a cat is leaning on a ledge and its paws draped down. Um, maybe, you know, and I hate to say it because this is both effectively the left paw as you would be seeing it. Um, maybe it's one paw is draped, you know, kind of over a corner, so this would be straight down, this would be kind of three quarters at you. Um, when you get into action shots and you have something more dynamic and you get something where a cat is reaching, so you've got the three quarter uh, from the viewers, you know, like that. Um, then you've got uh, coming at you, um, dead on, and then three quarter at the side. So we've got coming at you, coming at you, and just off to the side. Now we're going to do effectively going away. Again, this is another oriental. It's ironically the exact same shot of this cat. Um, in this case, the cat was reaching outside of the cage to grab a toy that the judge was using to um, tease the cat with the effectively find out how uh, active the cat was. Um, this one is one of the harder shots because, unlike here where you can do a straight line, this whole paw is curved. Um, and the angle of it is curved because it's coming at you, and the paw itself is about as curved as you can get it, so kind of like your hand. So, um, while I could define the bones in the hand with lines, being somewhat parallel. One, two, three. So this one's going to be kind of like here. They're all parallel. Okay. And then the back of the paw. I mean, we're talking this part here. Okay. So this would be the back of the paw here. And then I need this other toe here, which is not And then go here, here. And then this just becomes a series of curves. Okay. So, I mean, effectively, this is going to be one of the hardest paws you're going to draw, um, where it's actually kind of coming at you and grabbing something. Um, and it being an oriental, it's just going to accent all of the the joints. So we're going to go in and we're going to get this wrist in. Okay. And create the most dynamic toe, which is going to be the outside toe. kind of comes down like this. Okay, and then we got our line for our second toe, which again, it's an oriental, so we're going to accent the joint. And with it being an oriental, this tendon is actually really rather notated too. Okay, and then it seems like it kind of comes in, and then Yeah, kind of like that. So then this all becomes one giant kind of shape with the pad and the soft part of the toe becoming major definer. Okay. Now we've got this one, which comes down at an angle here. And believe it or not, my reference lines are pretty well gone, so I am really just going off of my reference shot. Okay. And this is all constricted, so it's like when you take your finger and you curl it up, you're getting that same kind of definition here on this toe. So you curl your finger up, you're going to get that um, bunching of flesh. Okay. Now, 
cats don't have three toes, cats have four toes, so we'll get this toe here. And determining whether or not I can actually, yeah, you kind of can. Alright, so then we can kind of see this toe here, just kind of comes up like that. Alright? Alright, so this is your general shape, and despite the fact that this cat has claws, and I know this cat has claws because I've handled this cat before, um, its claws are not out, but you can tell in some here where the spots where the claws are kind of retracted. Okay, so again, some more uh, dynamic shots and some more dynamic positions. It's not exactly your uh, atypical kind of uh, position, but still could make for an interesting composition. And because it's an oriental, uh, we can go in a lot with the blending stump um, to give this paw some shape. Okay. And being mindful of the um, shadows and how the shadows create the shapes of the paws and how your lighting also accents those shapes which is obviously the reason why I mean honestly in in drawing this I'm actually really close on to the reference shots and I'll post these as I'm kind of going um, but as I'm kind of doing them, it's almost cartoony how simple they look. Um, because there's not, uh, unlike drawing, a, like anatomy for like a horse, uh, there's not a lot of veins or uh, context. Might be the word I'm looking for. Um, so when you're breaking this down, it's almost, it's almost comical how simple it is. And by comical, I don't mean haha, -ha, I mean, uh, like, cartoony comical. Um, how simple this, doing pauses, and yet how incredibly complex. Um, and if uh, you guys are watching this and you're kind of thinking, like, well, I, you know, I've got this piece and I, I want to have this cat doing this, and uh, you haven't, you're having trouble kind of figuring out where you want to go with it or where the anatomy is going, um, shoot me an email or shoot me a. a reference shot and then shoot me the work you're working on and we'll see if I can't give you some some tips because um, that's kind of the whole point of this is to just give you some tips and to help you along because it's not exactly like there's a lot of help out there with this. Okay, now I'm noticing here and keep in mind the lighting is from down here and from here. This cat was in the cage and it was reaching out. Um, so underneath the wrist here we're going to have a little bit of weight coming down from the from the weight of the paw. So that'll help to give some weight here. And because it's an oriental and there's not a lot of, of heavy fur like there is in like a, uh, a domestic short hair or a Persian, um, this 
section here where effectively you have the division between these two toes and it goes back into the wrist because if you feel here and you know your human anatomy, you know these two your, your wrist here, uh, once you get past the small bones of your wrist this is two bones here and in this shot, because of the source of the lighting okay, uh, this is actually pretty defined And then it kind of fades off into a non-line. So then you take out your reference line. That's why I'm for, for tutorial purposes, I'm fine putting in some of these harder shape lines, but for actual rendering, I probably would not put them in quite so much. Um, this toe is almost all dark in order to make sure that we're putting it behind this second digit. Alright, so those are your two oriental uh, paws. Um, so the last of the paws is probably the very hardest. Um, this was taken on an Egyptian mouth that was being held up <coughs> in grand fashion. Um, this would be the, the fully extended with full claws extension, okay. Um, now the shot was taken with the cat overhead, so, um, the reference shot is, is down like this. However, in order to kind of facilitate multiple uses of it, I turned it so that it was going up. Um, which kind of speaks in the volume of if you have a reference shot of, of, of this is where your library becomes very important um, getting your subjects to do different things, go to cat shows and have take pictures of the judges uh, playing with the cats and getting them to do different things because the judges are studying the movements of these cats uh, if you have a friend that has kittens have her play with kittens or have him play with the kittens and just shoot pictures of the cats and their movements. Um, you may not have a huge use for those shots at the moment, but add them into your library and add them in as a resource so that when you do get the inspiration to build a piece, um, you have you can then go back and you have the reference shots that you would need to, to build up, uh, say, a cat that's leaping or a cat that's lunging. Uh, the reaching shots that you may need later. Okay, so this one again is uh, reaching with claws extended. Um, and then, so you'll see the webbing between, effectively on, on, on my hand, it would be this webbing here and then the nails. So this is uh, one of the harder ones. So the action of the wrist comes up like this. Okay. And then we have the anatomy, and this is where it becomes really hard to explain because the, the, the toes flail out. And effectively this would be the wrong hand, it would be like this. So you're, if you're drawing the same hand, you need the extension of each uh, tendon that follows the top of the toes. So we're not going to do the outside of the toes in this shot because there's more... Uh, emphasis on the tension of the toes. So we have the top of the toe here, the top of the toe here, the top of the toe here. Okay. In this one we're going to do the slight outside of it because you're getting a side shot of this toe. Okay. Um, so I guess in, in the context of um, trying to figure out where I would want um, the um, uh, the paw, as far as you want the shape of the paw, you'd obviously start like you would here, where you're, you're defining the general shape. Um, with this one, if you were doing that, it would be something like this. 
um, if I'm boxing this in to get the general scope of the size of this versus another object in the painting, um, I would probably box it in like this, just an outside line um, or general boxed shape even, you know. Um, but when you start using squares versus actual angles for feet, um, you wind up overemphasizing directionality. Um, so you, when you come back, you wind up with all of this extra here, and then you don't know where to go with it from there. <laughs> all right. So after figuring out where from the um, the wrist area here, down to the toes. Um, figure out where you want your toes. So kind of center the pad of your toe um, on the center line where the tendon is. Okay. Bearing in mind that this is actually not this is not the center line, this would be the center line. And this is the outside webbing of the toe. Okay. So your <clears throat> your um, paw shape winds up looking an awful lot like balloon or a cloud. It's a little baloney right now. Um, so your high tension points wind up being here. Um, your low tension points um, are actually be almost between the toes. It's in the soft spots on the pads here. Uh, claws are extended on this one. So um, top of the claw comes from the base point of wherever your tension line is because these tendons also control uh, the retraction of that nail. So when you draw your line out, your nail follows suit. Your claw follows suit. Okay. The side toes being the as awful as it is, um, I um, blasted off. Something else that I picked up as an artist tool a few years ago was actually a fake eagle's claw. Um, and while uh, this gets used in, in several craft projects as far as uh, you know, Native American crafts or, or traditional folk crafts, um, what I uh, initially purchased this for and what I use it for now are two different things. But um, what I find it very useful is uh, is because these claws can change position, just like you can change the position with your finger and um, all of that, but versus your nail, which is a sloped surface one way, um, this is sloped a whole other way. Um, so what I find is it's very useful to use in uh, trying to figure out what the angles are um, for uh, claws, uh, especially this uh, this is supposed to be an eagle talon or a hawk talon. Um, so I get to use it for not only um, birds of prey, but I can use this for uh, cats to some degree. Um, somewhere in my collection I also have a, a faux bear claw and a faux cat claw of uh, a larger variety which would have more of a, a digital base here. Um, but because it's meant to be like a lion's claw, I find this one for domestic cats to be a little bit more useful. So in this case, when I'm looking at this picture, I'm finding that um, this is very, from, from my perspective, it might not be from the camera's perspective, but um, this winds up being very close to the perspective that I need, and so then I can take and I can turn this and study it 
and say, okay, well, this is the angle that I need, and this is the line that I need. So, uh, if you guys have questions on this nice little tool, um, just leave me a message down below. But uh, it's a nice little pocket-sized uh, piece of reference material that you can easily manipulate. And uh, it's resin, not an actual eagle talon or a hawk talon. Uh, so nobody got hurt in the actual buying of said piece, and I believe I bought it for probably like eight or nine dollars. So endlessly useful. Okay. So going back to this, we've got our, our paw pads uh, kind of filled out. Um, Dark shadow here, fleshy part. This is going to come up like here. And I'm going to have a pretty stark sh shape that comes up from here. And this one is going to give me a pretty good defining line here. And then this becomes a little muddy. And I say it's a little muddy because, of, well, of course the cat's in motion, so um, you're going to have the downslope of this toe here, and then it's going to go into the webbing for a little bit, and then come back up. Get these lines out of here. Okay, so then got the outside of this toe here, which is actually pretty Find in character. We've got the slope of the webbing between this toe, this toe comes up like this, and we've got that. Okay, then there's this one. I almost want to just flip this around. So I'm on the same page. There we go. Alright. So then... Ah! So much easier. Alright. This comes down like this. This fleshy part comes up like this. The claw comes up. And then it comes back down because this is all relatively taut. And we've got the release of another knuckle and a tendon, and it goes back into the wrist. Now it's not a hard angle, so let's not get too technical on there. Okay, and then this. And then we're going to come up for this other claw here. And this is an exact side shot. So you've got the sheath and the skin of the claw. And the actual fleshy part. Now this is a, a furred cat, so unlike the uh, oriental, this mau is going to have fur on it. And then this tendon kind of comes up to a hollow here. Okay, so we got shadows there. Okay. So here, here, here. Here, it's way back here into, and then, yeah, let's see, alright, so much like if you were to take your, I'm gonna stop dropping the pencil, take your hand, you've got a lot of tension between the the tendons that come down the back of your hand. So that's where all our highlights are going to be and all of our lowlights. 
So on the hollow behind the paw, or the, behind this toe right here, you're going to have a shadow here on the inside of this tendon you're going to have a low light. In order to get this <coughs> claw to stand out you need a low light here. Again, this is actually going to be uh, helping the claw stand out by definition. So a low light there. And it being an Egyptian mound, it's going to have darker pads. But again, it's going to help the claw stand out against, that's where your contrast is real important. Okay, and this one. And so for time's sake, I'm not going to get into the finer detailing of this. Okay. So I'm creating a hard shadow, or a darker shadow here, in order to give some weight to the wrist. Just kind of sort of see the pad here. This is all kind of some fleshy um, skin in between. Pad here. This claw comes out, so when it actually leaves the pad behind, it's where we're going to kind of emphasize that coming out into a point. Otherwise, you don't have really anything to say that it didn't just stay there. So pulling this all back and softening it. sure what dog is sitting outside. I mean, mine is the only one in the yard. Alright. So because this is effectively an upreach, Push the back of the paw back by putting shadow on the on the wrist. Okay. Like so. And then I'm gonna put the shadow here because the, remember this claws it lays like your thumb. So it lays here, and in this shot the thumb is kind of coming sideways because the cat's reacting to lack of gravity because it's actually being held up at a really bizarre angle. Which is good for the reference shot, not very flattering for the cat, but... This 
case this shadow really helps to accent the fact that the dew claw and the dew digit is turned at a relatively awkward angle. And put some weight here. The shadows that are here in between the toes are actually really rather dark. Because we're going to put an awful lot of weight between these toes. And the pads, again, are black, so they're going to help to give a lot of contrast to those claws. And even on a cat like this where it's an Egyptian mound and the uh, um, fur is a very glossy, high sheen kind of thing. I'm going to make sure we're not getting too much into Not getting too light. So I mean everything is very context contextual. a little bit of a shadow here. This is the end of the digit. So this is like right behind the paw. You got a lot of flesh coming up around. It becomes the sheath for the claw. Alright. Alright, so that would be nine really dynamic Paw positions, uh, and of course, going from your two most standard should be these here. To uh, hanging down, which would probably be fairly common here and here. To some reaching paws, and, and then of course a very dynamic uh, stretching paw where it's coming at you. Uh, I kind of hope that this has been kind of enlightening, if not exceptionally interrupted. Um, uh, I don't work on too many cats on my Facebook page. I do apologize for that. Um, but if you have any questions or you want to follow me on Facebook, the page is Morning Hawk Creations. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to post them below, and feel free to subscribe, and hopefully the next posting will be uh, probably another cat face. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, just shoot me an email or contact me, and then I'll see you next time. Bye.